um, thank you for taking time out to speak to us. So talk to us about the Remembering Great Apes exhibition. Why is it important? The whole remembering, oh, it's almost a dynasty now. It was elephants and then it's rhinos. They, they, don't, they don't do a project and then the animal is saved. But the publicity and indeed money it raises is just critical because otherwise we're going to run out uh, of these animals. Uh, elephants could run out in our lifetimes. Rhino horn, it's more expensive than gold, it's more expensive than cocaine. And apes are, are treated to some appalling abuses, uh, not only from uh, from poaching, but also from zoos. Some of them are kept in the most hideous menageries, incarcerated in tiny confined positions, uh, uh, conditions. And yeah, it's, it's just ghastly what's gone on with them. Uh, every, and I think anybody who's seen, you, the connection is massive. You know, if you were to go to see a mountain gorilla and you had a cold, they wouldn't let you go because our DNA is so close, they can catch that. So you feel such a connection. And once that connection is there, it's part of your DNA. We're each part of the other's DNA anyway. So I feel anything one can do, yeah, it's, it's effective. But this remembering campaign is massively effective. Margot Raggett curates the cream uh, of the, the, the wildlife photographers, gets a whole load of backers, really worries and cajoles and bullies people into giving everything free of charge, uh, as it should be, frankly, and then raises an absolute bucket full of money. Uh, and that's what these species need, the money to be spent properly. And, and why should people care? Um, about... About F five meters, about five meters away from me is one of my sons. He's uh, he's uh, about uh, 11, 12 years old soon. Uh, I'd quite like him to see them. There's a chance in his lifetime he won't see elephants. He he, he might not see Bengal tigers. He might not see um, many endangered species. Uh, apes. Not only should they care, but people have to understand that if you poach a tiger or an ape or a rhino. One or two people get very fat very quickly on it, okay? And then millions suffer. These animals, I don't know how much uh, an, a, a mountain gorilla, if its paws are used as ashtrays, or its pelt is used as a rug, or its teeth is used for ludicrous Chinese traditional medicine. I don't know how much it's worth. But when you bear in mind that people are paying 1,500 bucks a day to spend one hour with them every day of the year, these animals are worth a colossal amount more alive than they are just butchered, their body pieces, parcel, piecemeal, off to the Far East. And, and, but, conversely, they must be a meal ticket to lots of people. And that's where the, the real elephant in the room is the corruption that can get in the way. And I know Margot is rigorous. Uh, about where this money goes and she works with extraordinary companies or, or charities like Born Free uh, because they're not all extraordinary uh, and she's managed to, to, to sort of prune out and done the necessary forensics uh, to get the companies that really matter. And how can we help as people? How can we help to... Well, uh, social media is a valuable tool now but not just liking and sharing, you know. Be prepared to put your own comment on any social media share. Number two, uh, I think very important, yeah, write to your MPs. You know, it's, it, people get things done by, by weight of numbers. You know, write to them, continue to write to them. And if you just get fobbed off, write to them again. And, and say how you're gonna, oh, you clearly don't care. And I'm gonna let the 48,000 people who are on my Instagram account or Twitter or whatever, I'm gonna let them know you don't care. They don't like that, they're politicians. You have to shame people. My view always with, with, with endangered species is, is number one, shame. You have to shame the end users. Nobody needs to sniff or swallow rhino horn to it supposedly improve their pathetic libido. Number two, then you go after the poachers. And if, it's, if the poachers uh, are not being absolutely jumped on, they will continue. But when you think how much a poacher gets for, for shooting a, uh, whatever it is, a gorilla or a orangutan, it's not very much, it's the people at the end. So that food chain has to be stopped. And it's no good us just having a go here at the Chinese, they're not going to listen. It's been illegal to, to, to market or to sell uh, uh, rhinos, for example, since 1992. Mm, they don't care. They turn a complete blind eye to it. 
But if their politicians are being humbled, you know, that's when it can stop. But people have got to be brave. And sadly, people with much, much louder voices than mine. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not a politician. And one of these days, we're going to get one who really cares about it. Because if, the, probably the best example I can give is, imagine a, a mountain community in Uganda that has... Let's let that motorbike go by. Imagine a mountain community in Rwanda that has, say, uh, a couple of families of gorillas. Okay? Now, let's say those gorillas are wiped out. They're poached, whatever it is. That community is just yet another mountain community. All right? It doesn't have anything special about it. Imagine the, the girl who walks to school each morning. Shh, shh, shh. The girl who walks to school each morning. And, you know, her mother's sick. Her father can't get a job. With gorillas there, you know, there's income. Mother can go to hospital. Father's got a job as a ranger. There's hotels, there's restaurants, there's lodges, there, there's park guards. There's all the ancillary benefits that just a handful of gorillas, can, or, or whether it's gorillas or orangutans or tigers or bonobos or whatever, they can really contribute. With them dead, they're gone. The whole thing's gone. So that's why they are meal tickets and precious ones. And also, just lastly for, yeah, encountering those apes oh, it leaves the most inde it leaves the most indelible mark on you to stand at the distance I am from you from one of those apes is remarkable it really is yeah um, I look forward to going back I always look forward to seeing them uh, and something like this I'm immensely proud just to be invited frankly